Okay, let's see. Do you want to... Ooh, maybe we do one of his, his most popular... Let's do the freezing rifle test. Now, we're not going to do Worth. all of it. There's just no way for me to cover all of Garantham's freezing rifle tests, but maybe we'll do it in, like, a two-parter or something. Yeah, 200 million hours is, like, it's, it, it, almost dawn of time level. But if you guys like Garantham, yeah, we'll, uh... Sub-freezing temperatures. Will your... Okay, so if you guys don't know, Garantham is, uh, a... I think he's active duty military of unspecified place, but I think he's Air Force. I think he's, like, Air Force special operations of some sort. Um, but he, see, he, he, by all accounts, is the real deal. Um, and he recently had this video where he tested rifles, uh fireability in the cold and he's clearly somewhere cold we are run will it fail where the ak run will right and he has fail? a lot yeah. we're here to find out there have been a lot of very interesting tests done in cold weather environments both by the alaska state police by kalashnikov group and many others and these have all been it's pretty interesting that the Alaska State Police, though it makes sense, actually, that the Alaska State Police would do firearms testing in the freezing cold. And I say that because, I mean, one, state police uh, in th this era, unfortunately, live in a country where both high-level body armor and high uh, military-grade rifles are for sale to civilians. So, unfortunately, the police need to be just as, as well-equipped. Um but also, if you're Alaskan State Police, you need to have enough firepower to stop some of the local wildlife. That's a real persistent threat. It's been really interesting. And we're here today to find out which rifle is going to run the best in a variety of different conditions as the rifles become more yeah. and more encrusted with frozen water. Stay tuned today on Grand Theft. I mean, I gotta say, he, the man knows how to do an intro better than almost anybody. Which rifle is going to run the best? Oops, wait, I accidentally. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like this content, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. The comment section, if you don't know, is over. Okay, all right. So, ladies, gentlemen, I've often forgotten, most certainly not by me, formed. You know, how is it going to... All right, we're going to skip ahead. Brand new weapons that you're taking up into Let's the lower. Let's just see. Let's see what he's got. These are going to be fine. So, starting off with the... Now, you have to remember, all battle rifles are tested in a, a wide range of conditions before they're adopted. Um... So there's not going to be any of these that should really fail to fire in standard cold conditions. Um, yeah, reliability is just so core to battle rifles, right? They're unlike, say, a competition shooting weapon or a hunting rifle that's expected. Even a hunting rifle really should have a pretty good level of reliability, right? Especially a modern one made with modern engineering. You should be able to get a high degree of accuracy even when it's in freezing conditions and has a lot of uh, ice and frost all over it. HK416 slash MR556 right here. Okay, function. Uh, 416 is like, a, it, it, I want to say it's a special operations favorite that's very similar to, I mean, it looks very similar to the M4, but it operates, I think, quite a bit differently. Test for this guy, we're going to do five rounds. Absolutely no problems there. Wouldn't expect anything else. Next up, we have the venerable Syrog. It, of course, has its roots in the uh good old austrian alps so let's go ahead and let's give it a sh uh, shot here try it out okay god okay i gotta say with bullpups this so one i couldn't fire a standard configuration bullpup because i'm left-handed and so this ejection port will throw rounds like my cheek will be resting right on the ejection port uh which will result in a jam so right there, uh, that's my first like dislike of bullpups. Um, you, you can see how much more compact this is, and yet it's still technically a rifle. It's because all this is the barrel length, right? As opposed to the barrel starting here on an M4, this HK416. So that's pretty interesting. Um, but what I will say is that this is just... Uh, it just... You know, you want to love it. You really want to love the bullpups. The Chinese... 
their standard battle rifle was a bullpup for almost 15 years and it just was plagued with problems and so finally they just said you know what we just need a standard battle rifle and they basically took a, a an hk416 clone no problems didn't expect any next up we of course have the very venerable URGI. I don't even know what the URGI is. This one has a shit ton of rounds on it. Let's go ahead and test this guy out. Okay, notice he's got the like magnification optic with the smaller close combat optic on top. That's a true Char Tarkov Chad move right there. Cool. Probably got a bunch of soot on my face because it's a gassy gun. Next up, we have the good old AKM. This one is built by Meridian. Of course, I wish we could have a Russian factory built gun, but a little difficult to acquire, but Meridian is a very good builder. I think okay, this is actually points. sick. Let's point out, once you, once you give us a good side profile, we'll point out what makes this great. Okay, first off, the AKM is designed in the 60s. It's, it's the original update to the AK and is actually, I think, the most common rifle in the world. The AK-47 wasn't act. I mean, it was widely produced, but the modernized AK, the AKM, um, is actually the one that was like mass, mass produced by the Soviets. What makes this so interesting as a design? First off, this is not a standard AKM um, muzzle brake. It is a looks like it could even be a flash suppressor, but something to keep the barrel from climbing. Um, Next, you've got the standard AKM has a much longer uh, handle here, usually, and they've parsed it off. They've cut it down to like half so that it's exactly like he's holding it. It's a sort of uh, smaller foregrip. And I think it's fascinating that they have this, the standard dust cover with a small optic just mounted on it, or may, it may be mounted to the side, right? There's some of these AKs have this side mounting sort of bracket that comes up and around the top. Cool. That was working no problem. Next up, we have the AK-105. This one was built out by Jim Fuller. It is, of course, not a factory AK-105, but when it comes to AK builders, I would say Jim Fuller is more than likely the best custom AK builder pr probably in the world, to be honest. So. This thing is about as damn close as you can be without being a uh, factory version and perhaps in some ways even better. I'm sure people get angry about that, but it doesn't matter. All right, this is just looking sick, honestly. That super high-end aftermarket stock, the looks like a B16 rail. I mean, just this is just a, this is just fancy. This is just a nice weapon. Absolutely no. Plus it shoots the much more common 556 five, round, which is Frankly, just good from an affordability perspective. Problems with that. Next up, we have a military upper. This one is not cleaned to test a couple things. <laughs> right off the bat, we already have our first malfunction there. Okay, it That's like a good it sign. Downloaded. So this gun is... Oh, the 105 shoots 545. Oh, I didn't know that. I, I, what am I thinking of? What's the one that shoots 556? Five, five, I can't... And blanking on it. It's been kept purposely dirty right there. Forgotten weapons fuming right now. I just use the forward assist. Um, this one has been kept maybe purposely dirty to see how it would uh, you know function. And this is a military block two upper on just a stag lower, but pretty good. All right, after that first little hiccup, looks like it's working okay-ish. I want to point out to the YouTube algorithm, right? Because we're gonna clip this out, put it on YouTube. These weapons are on a, on a range being used safely by a professional. We'll see what happens. Next up, SIG MCX. This was apparently, um, I think they decided uh, that this was a, uh, this is, I think this SIG is the one that won the military's next uh, service rifle, I think. Not much to be said. Okay, no problems there. Oh, man, coming to work out right here. Next up, CAC SR-15. 
see here. I have no idea what the SR-15 is. Make sure that it just tightened down. Next up, CAC SR-15. Give him credit, man. This dude's doing this in like one take. Gold. Oh, I love this one right here. So we have the FN FNC. Come on, baby. There we are. Okay. These some of these are not inspiring. Cool. Good to go. On fire. That looks like a FN FNC. Maybe it's a. Looks like it could be like a. Well, it's not a. Could be a gully. No, I don't know what this is. Uh, yeah, the snow could very well be dancing, ba dampening. Absolutely zero problems with the FNC. Next up, we have the Galil. Ah, uh, this is actually the first. And I think only assault rifle I've ever owned. Um, yeah, I bought the, my Galil for $650 out of the trunk of someone in Kansas. Um, this was a completely legal transaction. I mean, I called the cops for the guy's driver's license number to make just to make sure he wasn't a like wanted thief or something. Uh, it was a good rifle, but it was so heavy. All right, let's give it a shot. Whew. But there's a lot of things I really liked about it. <laughs> All right, get into the good stuff. We have our battle rifles right here. So oh, he's right. Yeah, I missed no more. Battle rifles use a full rifle cartridge. Start off with, we have the M14. So the M14, I suspect, may do well because it was the... Well, no, maybe not. I'll be curious because obviously the M14, which was based on the actual uh, Garand. I mean, it saw service in Northern Europe. Uh, so you assume that it would have been battle tested in the cold. And the M14, of course, was used in uh, Korea, right? During things like the Battle of the Chosen Reservoir, another iconic and pretty brutal cold weather battle. So it makes me think that it, it probably held up. Yeah, it's still used as a designated marksman's rifle until probably the 2010s. I believe it's working great. Of course, we have the good old SCAR. For all of our battle rifles, we are using uh, M80, just as a quick note, so it is a full-powered military round. People really thought the scar was going to be it. it was going to be the hot new thing that was going to replace uh, replace the M4, but it just it just can't function like a classic. Okay, I've got to grab the mag for the FAL. All right, we have the OSW. Unfortunately, our DSA, of course, the uh, full size is not working. Par for the course, guys. Cool. And finally, oh, there we go. Okay, we've got our LMT MWS and 6.5 Creedmoor. See how it does. Apparently, this is the new. Um, apparently, this is the 6.5 Creedmoor. Is no, I'm sorry, 6.8. 6.8 is the Sig round. 6.5 is not. No problem. Don't listen to me. All right. So. With the exception of the Block 2 M4, we had zero issues. Of course, that one was not clean. It was pretty credit up. That one has seen a lot All of right. rounds. All right, yeah, you're gonna spray them with water. Longer than expected to get these things to freeze, but they have. Uh, we also had a snow flurry come through and wind, and uh, they're now frozen. What killed the dinosaurs? The ice age. And we're ready to go. <laughs> I just love the fact that nowhere else in this entire, uh, nowhere else in this entire video, do we have like cut in clips, except for right there, a clip from Batman. Uh, what is it, Batman? Something. 
so we're... some random Batman, the, the, the old Batman movie, the cheesy one. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and start with the 416, and uh, we'll see if these work. So nothing's been changed. We'll just go ahead and uh, first thing first, uh, selector. Uh, oh god, yeah, it's fine. It's a little stiff, but uh, you know we didn't really do much to it. All right, five rounds. Uh, looks like, look at that injection port cover. It's kind of like stuck in place. It wouldn't come down, apart huh. from the ice. Oh, never mind. There's one other clip. Sometimes it makes the blade stick. Push it down. It's fine. Let's see if it closes. Huh. It's good. It's good. <laughs> All right, cool. So we have the Batman and Robin, right? That was the name of it. Seen. Optics fine. Okay, next up is going to be the AUG. <sighs> He looks cold, right? When you get cold, what happens is, um, so your body will start to pull blood from your extremities towards your core. And I'm sure you guys have felt it. It'll make your hands like stiffen up. Um, and you can tell, gosh, I got to remember my symptoms of frostbite, but basically your hands will start, they'll get white and clammy. Then they'll kind of get red, and then finally they'll start to turn blue, purple, and then black is like late stage frostbite. All right, let's go ahead and push that safety over. Oh shit. He just needs thicker gloves. Like this is this is a fact about the cold man is that, and and this is why you can see that, I think all these weapons are gonna function in this level of cold. But the user, right, needs to <laughs> the user is is the constraint here because to operate this these weapons, you need to have some pretty thick gloves to operate in the cold like this. So if the controls are too fine to be effective, right, to be operated, then the weapon is ineffective, you know? Like the user the user can't operate the rifle before the rifle can't operate. Got it. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Nice. I love how on the first round, it shakes all the ice and snow off immediately. One thing I love about ACOGs, tritium, dude. It's so cool. Such a good optic. All right. Next up. Yeah, what he means is uh, tritium is a um, radioactive uh, isotope, right, that provides a continuous projection of the uh, reticle onto the screen, meaning that even in the freezing cold, it doesn't shut down, right? Radiation doesn't stop just because it's cold. A battery will. Uh, and so that's a huge, huge perk to the tritium ACOG is that it lasts for, I don't know how long, a, a hundred years, something like that. Your GI, that is frozen. Yeah, that is, look at that. Look at all those icicles on the other side. She oh, wow. All right, here we go. Safety. <laughs> Safety. Come on, baby. Yeah, I mean, it's tough to say. If you can't get the safety off, the rifle may not function. <sighs> oh, got it. What's nice. up? That's what happens when you're fed on creatine and Pop-Tarts. All right, here we go. That's a true Chad diet right there. Pop-Tarts are classic backpacking food, honestly. Okay, malfunction. Come here and take a look, guys. So, ejection port failed to uh, open all the way. And it looks like it failed to eject the round. Tried to feed the next one. We have a nice little nasty malfunction. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna strip that. Oh, shit. <sighs> I'm gonna strip that magazine out. Damn, and that thing is frozen. There we go. Dead. Dead is right. Holy shit. That was way stiffer than it needed to be. All right. So that is moving freely. So no, he's like, oh, let's function. do it again. Dude, oh, you just... Okay, come check this out, guys. Magazine catch fro uh, stuck once it got to the other side. Push it back. This is a Colt lower with URGI upper. This is military correct. All right, it's locked in. Okay, rounds loaded. Oh, 
All right, so a total of six. Come on, go to safe, baby. There we go. Yeah, looking warm is right. I'm feeling warm. I have my coffee. I'm doing fine. Definitely stiff. Not great. These guys hit the poor Garantham, not so much. AK should be fine, right? Micah, what do you think? Honestly, dude, safety is going to be easy to take off. All right, let's try the safety. We'll try it from right here. Oh, wow. Easy, dude. Yep. All right. Legendary AK. And you have to remember, this thing was built born in the cold, you know? I mean, this is kind of wild that uh, the a, a testament to the AKM that this is a, a rifle that was basically designed, yeah, in like the 60s, uh, maybe the 50s, but it it's, holds up to the cold, austere conditions better than a lot of these modern weapons. AK is fine. Honestly, <coughs> I'm going to say it right. No, you're thinking, so you're saying 47, you're thinking of the AK-47. Uh, this is the AKM. It's a slightly updated version. Right now, I want the F by updated, I mean designed in like the 50s. And see to do well. I'm kind of scared for it. All right, Jim Full. Oh my God, that sling. Jim Fuller AK-105. Let's try that with their finger. No problem. All right, let's try <laughs> it's that. just funny how cold resilient they are. Cool. AKs were no problem whatsoever. And now we have the dirty block too. Oh, that's cool. See that froze right there to the side of the uh, the light. All right, safety, I think is gonna be a bitch. Oh no, it actually wasn't that bad. Maybe all that carbon helped it. <laughs> it's a good point, right? You, If you have another lubricating liquid that isn't water, it won't freeze below, you know, zero degrees Celsius. That's why you want to just lubricate the absolute shit, or another reason to use a good lubrication on your rifle, because you want something that's freezing point is way lower than water. Block two for the win. All right, SIG MCX. Oh shit. Dirty block two? Yeah, that was a dirty block two, it was fine. Okay, SIG MCX. Uh, oh yeah, let's see. Is... Got it. Oh God, the well, safety's already frozen in place. There we go. That's the military's next battle rifle, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. It locked back. Um, the magazine's not empty. So, just so you guys can see that. Can you see that good, Micah? Yeah. Okay. So, we'll try to... I mean, this is one of the things, right? So... Uh, Brendan Herrera was like, oh, the Russians learned you have to conscript proof your weapons. Listen, they're running AK-12s, okay? These are not highly advanced rifles. And you can see, these things are e not idiot-proof, but they're, they're, they're environment-proof. And it's one of the things that sort of bothers me. It's like, this is about... This is not... It's, the, Russia's problem is not an individual soldier equipment problem. Their equipment is... is great solid it's just their soldiers are idiots and they're under resourced they're like drunks it's just they're just bad they're just bad soldiers and no amount of gear can offset bad uncommitted soldiers yeah i mean look at this this is the u.s military's battle rifle and it got smoked by a 50s ak same thing, ARs, the magazines, and the safeties freeze up. So, yeah, like an AK magazine rocking in is kind of a bitch, but it is a very simple thing that doesn't freeze up. Right, and you have to consider these sort of things. Like, precision manufacturing and gee whiz stuff, if it can't stand up to the environment, then it's no good. Come on, baby. Jesus, dude. I might try that. We'll use the AK. <laughs> yeah, the AK is a tool to disassemble other people's weapons. Come on, dude. 
there we go. Oh, come on. I think. This is, this is uncomfortable. There we go, okay, we got that. Oh my God, the US military, we're in so much trouble. Okay. Dude, at this point, yeah. Okay, MCX is down. All right, Knight's Armament, SR-15. <laughs> the paracord is just frozen up. Are we gonna crush souls? Oh, come on, safety. If you can't get the weapon off safe, it's non-functional. I just, I, I, I can't be, I can't believe I have to repeat this. I understand it's bad content to be like, safety stuck, safety stuck for every AR style weapon. <clears throat> Got it. Fuck you, Kalashnikov group. <laughs> oh, okay. poor guy. If you want to come over here, bolt locked to the rear. What keeps causing that? To... I'm guessing ice. Like underneath the mag catch? Yeah, or something like pushing up on it. It shouldn't. Okay, let's try to. Huh. God. <sighs> it's just hard to watch. Damn it to hell. All right. We use uh, AK around here. Try to push that. Oh my God. Magazine catch. Don't, okay. Another safety issue. AK magazine, that's fine. But if you don't use the rounds of a rifle to manipulate and don't use them as a tool, just bring a multi-tool. And the reason is because one, if you use the blunt end, that's the primer and that will blow the round up. Now, if you do the front end, you risk distorting the actual bullet itself, meaning that as it passes through the rifling of the barrel, you're in danger of its flight getting all dicked up, and it may not feed properly. I mean, you're, you're going to ruin the bullet, the actual bullet. Dude, my hands are so cold. Ah, come on, get out of there. Continuum has it right. And only use freedom packets to bring freedom, not as a lever. I mean, I think it's fair to say that this rifle's not operable. I can feel it, like, giving out. Like, the magazine wants to... There we go. Okay, so we got the magazine catch. <sighs> Okay, got that magazine out. The question is, what the fuck? Excuse me. This is just this is just hard to watch. We do we need to move forward? Yeah, let's let's watch the FMC. You still got enough light, dude? Yeah. Should I show them what the light actually looks like? Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh That's damn. What my eyes can see. All right, here we go. All right, FNC, safety. Hey, breaded. Thanks for the prime sub, my man. Yep, a little stiff for sure. Not like the AK. We could show the leverage on it, though. Yeah, you have... How realistic is this issue? I mean, it's not super... So here here are normal... Um, here are normal scenarios where this would happen. Um, it rains during the day. Your rifle gets wet you're in like a fighting position and then it freezes at night that's where this is going to happen to you um that's it that's that's the situation right I, I can tell you um like backpacking on some military exercises yeah we've had this happen to us um as a general rule like you you know you'll you'll you want to keep you dry because if it's a if it's going to cover your rifle in ice to the point where it's non-functional, it is super dangerous for you as a soldier to get soaking wet and then be in freezing conditions. Like extremely life-threateningly dangerous. So the reality is that never on an exercise would I ever allow that to happen to soldiers. And Afghanistan, we never put ourselves in a situation where we were like out, had no overhead cover, we're like in fighting positions for that long. Um so in real 
real combat, like I wouldn't really end up in that situation if I could at all avoid it. That said, uh, I am certain that for, say, troops on both sides of this Ukraine conflict, they've almost certainly been rained on and then or gotten wet some other way um, and then had uh, temperatures drop below freezing, building up ice on their weapons. Got a lot of leverage on it right there, this old bad boy. So, so I would describe it as a po plausible issue, but not a likely one. Safety certainly works. All right, let's try it out. These are extremely expensive. Each one of these that he's firing is probably ooh twelve hundred to two thousand dollars. Probably maybe even more for some of the really high end stuff. So there's yeah, probably there's probably a car's worth of of uh, weapons and optics here. Like a new car. Cool. I'm happy. I really like the FNC. I'm not showing favoritism, but I am. Okay, the Galil. Yeah, yeah. Be re reasonably, I would say about each one of these rifles, average with all the G Wiz optics on it, probably two thousand to three. Yeah, let's say twenty two fifty per rifle. And there's what ten. So yeah, you're talking about twenty thousand to twenty to. Twenty-five thousand dollars in in hardware. Here we go. You got a lot of leverage on the safety. I think we'll be fine. Easy. There we go. All right. That was easier than the FNC. That was actually awesome. Nice. Let's go. Let's go, Galil, man, for the win. Okay. M14 Blackhawk down. Let's try that safety. Okay, Done. Clicked off. Clicked right off, baby. Ah. Okay. Okay, so you notice what he did there. That's actually a good move. Sometimes you have what's called a hang fire where you pull the trigger and then it's delayed, right? The 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 round needs time to burn off and then it goes. So you notice he gave it like 3 seconds where he waited for the rifle to fire, keeping it safe. Fuck. That's not what I wanted. <sighs> Don't you tell me. Okay, so... <sighs> okay. This is so not very okay, safe. So, unfortunately right now, the trigger clicked and the it hasn't released the hammer. I'm not sure if it's going to release. So, Mike, I'm going to have to ask you to set the camera down so I can get some water to pour on this because yeah, it's unsafe at fire. this point. Yeah. But that's, that's a, you know what? Respect to, to Garantham for recognizing that he is in an unsafe situation that filming has to stop. That is that is a good move. Okay, stop. So I wonder if that's hot water. <sighs> there we go. Okay. Okay. Okay, weapons rendered safe. Okay, she's done. Uh, we I got the safety off. When I clicked the trigger, uh, the trigger released. Um, uh, it seems that something froze up in there, uh, so I wasn't sure if the hammer was going to fall at that point, if it was going to break through the ice. So once we got that thing lubed up, we went ahead and we're going to end the test on that one because I'm not comfortable doing that. All right, FN Scar. Yeah, that's that's a right call. Safety, I'm worried about. No, nope, went off no problem. Okay, here we go. Ah. Uh... Okay, so we had a failure to extract right there. Mikey, you want to come take a look at that? We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna try to, oh shit. God damn, these modern battle rifles should not be less reliable than than the one built in the, in the 50s before we knew what a computer was. This is not the gun I expected to, you to know fail. What? I had a feeling, I don't know why. Really? Yeah, Fuck, something dude. about the open bolt. Okay, we're going to try to AK this. Okay. <laughs> when he means AK this, he means perform AK style immediate actions. And when an AK has a failure to feed like that or a double feed or whatever, the or the um the bolt carrier group gets stuck, what happens is that um uh, Yeah, you have to do some sort of, you have to 
basically dislodge it. And you can do that by grabbing the trigger group and slamming it on the ground and pulling it open, which is crazy because that's a really rough way to treat a battle rifle. So mortaring seems to have worked. Oh, you see how yeah, slow that came slow forward? Okay. Oh my God, he's gonna shoot it again. It failed, it failed, dude, it's okay. a failure. The trigger. Other rounds frozen in the mag. That was a, I don't see a primer strike. I think perhaps the, something's frozen up in there. Let's try it one more time. There we go. Okay. Yeah, there, there are small differences between the, well, there, okay, there's some significant differences. If I was to go as a civilian and purchase a um, assault rifle or battle rifle, uh, style weapon um there would be key differences one i unless i had a extremely hard to get an expensive permit would not be able to get a, a semi-automatic or, or sorry a fully automatic or three round burst enabled rifle um i would instead have a version that only does safe and fire um is that a meaningful difference? Uh, depends who you ask, right? Um, other than that, major differences. Um, some military assault rifles or military assault carbines uh, have very short barrels. And there is a point in the U.S. where a barrel is too short to be legal. Uh, they're so-called short-barreled rifles. And mil the military, some military rifles may have short barrels that are not us legal so the answer is yes there's some differences but they are pr extremely minor compared to what you would see in most other countries just took a little bit to i think break through that ice and and uh, operationally right like if if um if some nefarious person was to travel back in time and tell my whole platoon in afghanistan like we're replacing all your m4s with uh ar-15 like m4 clones we would be i mean we'd be upset but we it wouldn't functionally impact our combat ability very much uh and that's because at the like our automatic weapons fire came from our mounted weapons and the m4s were like if you wanted to sh put rounds down range rapidly you would just pull the trigger a lot i don't think we ever fired on three round bursts in the uh, fire control group or full auto or whatever oh baby FN's fucking uh, FN, excuse me. All right, we have the FN FAL. So we're gonna go ahead and get that safety off. Got the lab mic wire there. FN or should we say DSA? DSA. All right, that. Oh my God. Got the safety off. Let's try it. Damn, shout out the to the most FAL. surprising test right here. The DSA FAL. Who would have thought? <sighs> Finally, last. All right, last but not least, late gents. And certainly not least. LMT, MWS. This thing is fucked. All right, let's get that safety. It is AR-like, so I am worried. It came off. Ooh, Ooh. nice. Stiff. No problem. Ugh. Okay, well that All that right. was unexpected. Okay, uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. all right. So yeah, he talked about the six five or whatever. Guys, we're gonna stop that there. I know there's an extreme freezing test, but listen, the winners and losers to me already seem like it got sorted out because if you can't operate the weapon, then you you haven't then the weapon's inoperable. If you can't get it off safe without going through a whole dramatic hubbub, then the weapon's not operable. And it's, yeah, pretty clear that weapons maintenance in, in freezing conditions is pretty important, uh, no doubt. But yeah, I think that's what we learned here. So I said, no, 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 it was supposed to be my pants. I killed, what did you do to me? I killed, I don't know, want to free for champions.